So I have shortened your title a bit, so otherwise we have no space. And this is the only, let's say, advertising page. So on the right side, you can see all the topics which you have addressed in your um, title. So it is a hyperspectral imaging camera. It is, as far as we know, the smallest in the market. So it's just 26 by 26 millimeters, 30 grams. Various models are available and frame rates in data cubes up to 340 frames per second. So these are the bullet points about our cameras. This did not change. So hyperspectral imaging cameras, side spec two cameras are available right now since a bit more than five years. So it's now time to update you. We just released uh, our size pack two camera series. It is the successor to our quite successful size pack camera series, which we provided before. So I would like to start with a brief recap about other uh, uh, talks I have given so far. What are we talking about? What is hyperspectral imaging? What, which technology are we using? And then which are the advantages uh, in relation to the old camera series of our SciSpec 2 camera series? So let's simply start. I think the first pictures, several of you have already seen them. It's just to give an intro about the idea behind hyperspectral imaging. So materials do absorb light differently. So the absorption or reflectance um, curves uh, in relation to the wavelength of the light are different uh, on different materials. And so the idea is to use these different uh, spectral responses to recognize or also differentiate materials in a probe. So in this case, there are a couple of fruit gums and foreign substances, which can then with this technology be differentiated. So this is just a quick intro of what we are talking about, the basics. I think a lot of you have had a spectroscope in your hand, so which is a point measurement unit with usually highly, uh, with a relatively high resolution, but it's only just a point measurement. A hyperspectral imaging system should have to deliver an image, so a two-dimensional part of the reality, but with a third dimension that is the spectral response. So as a consequence, the data are represented by a so-called data cube. And that is exactly what finally the outcome from also our cameras is, as uh, in the main of our models, uh, most of them with one individual shot. So it's a so-called snapshot system which we are providing. So the cameras we are building are in any case, the result of a cooperation, and we have intensified the cooperation between IMAC and us in the last one and a half years to create the successor line. So IMAC is a research institute in Belgium. It's a pretty large institute. I think it's 1,300 people working there. And one of their tasks was to start, I guess it's 10 years ago, to create hyperspectral filter systems or filter systems where we are able on wafer level, on pixel level, on um, CMOS-based uh, sensors, um, so that you are able to differentiate different peak wavelengths uh, in a very compact system. So the technology IMEC is using is um, uh, interferometer in front of the whole spectral filters. So basically two mirrors, two semi-permeable uh, mirrors and the lights and 
this filter only passes a very specific um, wavelength. So that is then the peak wavelength. Basically, you can have a second and third harmonics, which could destroy the result of some measurements. So we have to take care of that. And the results are then various different of these WFO filters on a wafer so that you can, as a result, differentiate different peak wave things and are able to reproduce the um, spectral response from materials you're looking at. This is just to give an idea what we are talking about. The pixel size of the pixels on the sensor is five and a half micrometer. So the structures we are talking about are smaller than five micrometer for each and every of these um, spectral filter we are using in these cameras. So two different filter layouts are available. One is so-called line scan, so where the identical peak wavelength are structured in lines over the old sensor surface. There is one sensor available with a relatively high resolution, 150 bands, from visible light up to near infrared. And the snapshot mosaic cameras have a slightly different topology. So there are on each pixel different um, of these filters arranged so that you have a pattern with four by four or five by five uh, different wavelength with different filters so that you are able to differentiate 16 up to 25 different bands. But in this case, uh, the sensor gives with one image a complete hyperspectral imaging information. From these kind of sensors, three different standard sensors are available with a four by four pattern, one in the visible light from 460 to 600 nanometer, the other one four by four from 600 to 860 nanometer, so from red to near infrared, and the other one is a new five by five sensor from 665 to 960 nanometers. Just to give you a very brief idea, these patterns, in this case it's in four by four, is repeated over the complete center surface. So this is the technology to be able to get a complete image plus hyperspectral information in one shot so that you do not have to scan, but you have to pay a price and the price is the reduced resolution because you have to uh, so this is a two megapixel sensor and the spatial resolution is then forth in both direction. That is the price you have to pay. So now size pick two, what's new? We have optimized the camera hardware itself, so the camera housing. So we will see some details later on. Uh, the band pass filters to reduce the light which really hits the sensor are completely newly developed. So for some time, uh, different wavelength ranges. We now calibrate the complete camera system. So the combination of sensor filter camera and uh, standard lenses. So that's really the result is an usable hyperspectral measurement instrument. Well, this is a big step forward. And for the size pay two cameras, we are also using the next generation hyperspectral imaging sensors. The advantages uh, are part of the next one of the next slides. Uh, one additional um, result of our intensified cooperation between IMAC and us is that now the customers of SciSpec2 cameras have direct access to IMAX hyperspectral imaging mosaic software, to IMAX hyperspectral imaging mosaic API, which was a missing gap over years, and also do have access to IMAX hyperspectral imaging support, inclusive help for 
application development integration and so on. So these are really important uh, advantages of the uh, cooperation with the new hardware. So now let's start with the topics in detail. So as already mentioned before, the uh, interference filter systems depends extremely on the light of the of the incident angle of the light. It is strictly recommended by IMAC that this angle is below five degrees. And what we have learned in the last one and a half years is our cameras are anodized, black anodized, but these um, material is going to be a mirror in near infrared. So the consequence was that um, we have a pretty high amount of um, scattering light inside of the camera, which in some cases really destroyed the spectral response. And as a result of this learning process, we have now manipulated the camera housing. So all of these red marked pieces of the housing are now um, do have now a different surface material so that we can really avoid any straight light. And this is one of the biggest improvement in spectral results, uh, which we can measure uh, from the point of our uh, camera hardware. Um, all the filter glasses are newly developed um, and now all filter glasses are also integrated inside of the camera. In the former camera series, in some of the camera cases, additional filter glasses have to be added outside the camera. With the change that the filter glass is part of the camera in all cases, now also applications are available where no external lens have to be added, so for example, microscopy applications. So this is a minor but very important step. And also the optical quality of the filter glasses, the transmission data are optimized for a much better also spectral result. So what we are doing, as mentioned, is a complete camera calibration after production. And for each and every camera, um, complete proof against uh, standard color uh, probes are performed and the results are documented and part of the delivery of the cameras. And it's not just that we compare results um, between a, the reference spectra and the measured spectra after uh, correction steps. We also check the position of the peaks against the expectation. So I will come back to this a bit later. So the maximum tolerance to the expected position of a peak is now less than 1%, which is also a really big improvement against the old camera series. So this is just an example to give you the idea about the quality improvements of the next generation hyperspectral imaging sensors. In this case, it's a four by four visible sensor, which was also available in the last years. And what we can see here as an example is visible for more or less all old generation one sensors. You have one gap in the spectral response. It may happen that a couple of bands overlaps, which at least partially destroys the spectral data and the options to create a spectrum. And the new sensors now do have almost equidistant uh, peaks. Uh, higher quantum efficiency 
and also the peak positions are reproducible from sensor to sensor and also from wafer to wafer, which also improves the usability of the cameras. These are some graphs about the spectral reproducibility. So the red lines are information about the spectral position of the different bands from the old sensor. So what we can see here is that there is a really huge spread be uh, between the positions of the peaks from sensor to sensor. So it was really in the range of up to 30 nanometers between sensor and sensor. So that the possibility, especially for industrial application, was simply not given. And the blue lines are now resized from various sensors from the new generation. So what you can really see is it's a line, more or less. So the position of bands are equidistant. And also the reproducibility from one sensor to the next one, or also between different wafers, is extremely better than before. So, as a result of the cooperation between IMAC and Ximia, now all users of SciSpec 2 cameras have access to IMAX software for analysis, data acquisition, storage, and so on. And uh, the final slide is just an overview about the four standard size spec 2 camera models. Um, we do have three different technologies and layouts, as mentioned before. One is two of these cameras do have a four by four layout. The first one, invisible light, and the next one is directly starting at the end point of the first one, uh, floor red and near infrared. So from in total with two cameras, you are now able to realize a snapshot system from 460 up to 860 nanometers with approximately 31 bands. The new 5 by 5 is again near infrared sensor and the line scan 150 is is a well-known camera has its wavelength detection between 470 and 900 nanometers. So this, I hope, was a brief and understandable overview about the advantages of our new size spec 2 camera series in comparison to the predecessors. So I hope I'm in time, more or less. And thanks for your attention.